Hey guys, so welcome back. Let's just jump right in, right? So the title of this presentation is e-commerce email marketing campaign best practices by the self-proclaimed email king, which is me. Obviously I'm not the king, yeah, it's just a funny joke. Anyways, uh, you probably have noticed in uh, the bottom left-hand corner is a new logo. It's not my agency logo. Did I just copy and paste this and uh, plagiarize this slide? No, that logo is mine. I am gonna be launching a course very soon, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. Finally, I know, right? Like I've been, people have been asking me to make a course about service delivery specifically when it comes to email marketing for the longest time. So it's gonna be finally available to you guys in the next coming weeks. Just be on the lookout on the channel. And also if you wanna get the latest updates, make sure to join up the Facebook group, links in the description. Let's jump into it. So when it comes to some of the best practices for uh, email marketing campaigns, specifically for e-commerce and Shopify businesses, I always like to optimize the aspect ratios for mobile. So what I mean by that is when you're designing the email, uh, I've always made sure to design the uh, banners in a very specific aspect ratio. So the reason that is, is because imagine someone opens their email on the phone, which is the majority of opens nowadays. You want them to see the entire banner without a uh, plus the call to action without them needing to scroll. Because if they need to scroll, then most likely, I mean, sometimes, majority of the time, they're not actually gonna scroll, they're just gonna bounce, right? So you really wanna make sure no text, no offer, uh, the call to action isn't cropped out of that initial frame. For the rest of this video, I'm gonna refer to frames of emails as slides, uh, just for kind of like ease of use. So as a best practice, I like to do it this way, right? So just remember that mobile is nine by 16 aspect ratio. So ideally the banner should be just over four by five excluding the logo. So including the logo, it should be around uh, probably like four by six or by seven, roughly, right? But including the logo, it's not gonna be as drastic. Four by six uh, or four by seven max, I think, uh, including the logo. So that you get the whole banner plus the logo plus the call to action in a single slide. Next is you wanna determine what type of content include. So the four questions I like to ask myself Sorry, the three questions to get clear what type of content you need to include is the following, right? What What's the purpose of this email? Are you trying to educate the receiver, the reader? Or are you trying to sell to them? Or are you trying to inform them? Maybe you're trying to announce something, etc., etc., right? So without knowing the purpose of the email, it's very hard to populate it with content. So make sure before writing any copy, before trying to kind of like structure the email, make sure you have an understanding of what the purpose is, right? Next is which segment are you targeting? The different segments on your list requires a different messaging. So for example, if you're targeting VIP customers, so customers with really high uh, lifetime values already or repeat purchases after, uh, if they've purchased, I don't know, three or more times from your store, for example, they have a very good understanding of what your product does and what your brand is about, right? So they're not gonna need any education unless it's like a new product, for example, with a new functionality. Most likely they just need to be sold to and announced to first and then informed in a different way. Right. Whereas with non-buyers, most likely they're still fence sitting, right? They're, they're not, they're kind of like scratching their chin about your product. They're not really sure if they want it or need it. This is where education is slightly more necessary. Or if you're sending to first time buyers, you're trying to convince them to become a, a repeat purchaser, then Again, you don't need to educate them as much because they already bought the product, so they have a fundamental understanding of how everything works. But more so, you wanna give them offers, incentives maybe, and then also uh, give them other reasons on why they should buy your other products or upsell more than more of the same product, right? So knowing which segment you're targeting before structuring the email is really important as well. And lastly, what is your call to action, right? So for example, if the purpose of the email is to educate your customer, then you, your call to action might not be shop now, driving traffic to like a product page, right? Your call to action might be driving traffic to a FAQ page or a reviews page or a piece of content, for example, right? If you're trying to educate the customer on the benefits and the utility of your product. Whereas if you're trying to sell to the customer, then obviously the call to action should be really aggressive, like shop now, order today, um, you know, get your X product before we sell out, something along those lines where it's more direct, like, hey, look, you know, 
we're, we're giving this offer for the next 24 hours only. There's only six hours remaining. Come by now. So ask these three and understand the following, what the purpose is, and then ask what the segment you're targeting is, and then determine what your call to action is. Next, I wanted to cover some common mistakes, right? So there are three common mistakes that I see brands making all the time when I go to audit their emails campaigns. Number one, that is having multiple call to actions to different landing page, right? So for example, if your call, top call to action is a shop now call to action, driving traffic to a collections page, whereas the uh, you might add another call to action button on the second slide of your email saying, hey, check out our latest blog post, right? This kind of messaging is slightly confusing and I generally like to keep the call to action um, the same. The only exception is, for example, if you're trying to show off like a whole collection of three to four products, you're highlighting the benefits of each product in each slide, for example, right? Then obviously the natural instinct would be for you to drive traffic to those individual product landing pages, in which case it would still count in my head as like a single call to action because you're driving traffic to a collection of product pages. Right. Next, another common mistake is only having one call to action at the bottom of the first slide, right? Or having one call to action at the bottom of two of the email, two to three slides down. So for example, if you're designing a really, really long form email that spans two to three slides, then you should really include call to actions, a multiple of the same call to actions at different chunks of the email. So at the end of every slide. Why? Because if someone goes onto their mobile, most likely they're not going to scroll to the very bottom and they're not going to see the call to action that you've buried at the very bottom of the email, right? So that's why it's super important to have a call to action at the end of slide one, end of slide two, end of slide three, etc., etc., just so that people don't need to scroll to know where to click, right? And lastly, other common mistake is I see brands just like going way too heavy on length when it comes to their email campaigns. They also end up using multiple GIFs and multiple high resolution images to kind of like pad out the content of the email. This is not only a problem simply because of deliverability, like you're making the email way too heavy, but also when your emails are like more than let's say three slides long, realistically, people aren't going to look at slide four and five, right? They're just going to scroll to slide one and two max and then just make the decision of whether they want to click or not. So to give you a good understanding of that, if you go into any of your campaigns with uh, that are slightly like longer form, you can go to the analytics section and you can see the link activity and you'll be able to see exactly which links have been clicked. You're going to notice that 90% of the clicks come from the top call to action. Right. So it's super, super important that you have multiple of the same call to actions if it's like a two to three slide long email. Yeah. And also make sure your email is not too long and you don't overload it with uh, high resolution GIFs and images. So lastly, I wanted to talk over a quick campaign checklist, a list of questions that are kind of binary to ask yourself. And if your answer is uh, the correct answer of all of them, then your campaign is basically ready to go. Right. So number one is, is it optimized for mobile in terms of aspect ratio? So going over the four by five rule that I gave earlier, uh, excluding the logo and the other call to action. Next is, is the content relevant to the target segment? So for example, you wouldn't send an educational piece of uh, content instructing the user on how to set up your product if they're a VIP customer, right? So is the content relevant to the target segment? Number three is, is the email less than three slides long? So generally speaking, I like to keep my emails less than three slides long. Um, sometimes if, if it's like super necessary, then I would have it more than three slides. But generally speaking, if you're doing it yourself, I would recommend uh, three slides or less, right? So if you're, is your email less than three slides long? Yes. Cool. Number four, does it have a call to action in each slide? Yes. Amazing. And lastly, is the campaign driving traffic to one location or uh, multiple locations, but they're all like relevant to each other? right? If you go back to the example I mentioned earlier, it would make sense for you to have multiple call to actions to uh, various kind of like product landing pages if they're in the same collection, but it wouldn't make sense if you have a call to action saying shop now driving traffic to a product page and then later on driving traffic to like a FAQ page, for example, right? It really mixes up the messaging. I honestly really hope you enjoyed uh, this video and found value in it. If you did, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, if you're an OG subscriber, then look out for
my course that's being released like a week and a half or two weeks from now. Yeah, I'm just drumming up some hype for that. It's gonna be like, it's gonna be really good, right? It's just, it's just gonna be really good. I've worked on this for about two and a half months and I'm making this 10 out of 10, right? It's gonna bring you some incredible ROI if you're a brand and it's gonna help you deliver an amazing service and increase your retention if you're an agency or a freelancer. So thank you so much for sticking with me to the end of the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.